Welcome to Life in Biology, I'm Dr. Joel Graff, and in the previous video I posted, we walked through the logic of the trip operon in bacteria, and now we're going to talk about the LAC operon in bacteria. And just like with the trip, we're just going to work our way through and think through it logically as to what proteins would be bound or not to the uh, sequence upstream of a set of genes that do something. So what is this set of genes that we're dealing with? Well, we're dealing with the LAC operon. And the LAC operon, LAC is short for lactose. And so these are going to be a set of enzymes that can help break down lactose. So with the trip operon, we're building trip. With the LAC operon, we're going to break down lactose. So there's already the first example of where this is switched. We should switch our thinking compared to the trip operon. Now lactose is a molecule, it's a disaccharide, and it's made of glucose and galactose. So if we upregulate some enzymes to break down lactose, we will end up increasing the concentrations of glucose and galactose in the cell. And glucose should ring some doorbell or uh, ring a bell for you because that would be the molecule we broke down in uh, cellular respiration to get so many ATP for the cell. So if you're low on energy, let's break down lactose and get some glucose and then we know all of that glycolysis and uh, rest of the steps of cellular respiration. I won't bore you with listing the the four or five steps. Um, but then we also, uh, this LAC operon, the logic of it takes into account whether lactose is around and it also takes into account whether the cell has ATP. And it's not necessarily ATP, but that's the one we're used to thinking of as energy. If you don't have a lot of energy, then your concentration of AMP will be high. So AMP, that's adenosine with one phosphate group. And if you add a pyrophosphate, which means two phosphates, that could together make a, an ATP, which has three phosphates. So you take a molecule with just one phosphate, add a couple phosphates to it, and now you've got ATP. So there's kind of a back and forth there. And of course, that was a back and forth there too, even though I didn't draw the arrows like that. But we're mostly going in the breakdown lactose to get to glucose. Okay, so because we're taking into account two different metabolites and whether uh, in our logic for controlling this gene, that means that we're going to have four possible uh, uh, scenarios with which the, the cell will want to take the inputs and come up with one output for what should happen. So the cell wants to take stock of how much energy it has and by energy, I mean ATP. If the energy is high, I have in parentheses there low AMP. So, gotta gotta remember that the ATP is energy, and without ATP, you have a AMP. Over here, we've got low energy, and so then the AMP concentration in the cell would be high. So, if the cell senses high AMP, it it starts to panic, and it wants to make more energy okay the other thing that's going to go into our logic here is whether there's lactose and the protein that binds to the lac operon to control whether the lactose genes are turned on or not did i say protein the metabolite is actually allolactose but if lactose concentrations are high allolactose concentrations are high as well so uh that you can kind of speak about those interchangeably. Uh, so you can have low or high concentrations of lactose. Now, if your lactose concentrations are low, I put a minus here and a minus here, meaning that you wouldn't want to bother making some enzymes that can break down lactose if lactose isn't around to break down. So in both of those cases, we're going to end up with no transcription or at least very little amount of transcription of the lac operon. Now, if you do have lactose around, 
there's two possibilities to consider here. Maybe the cell has high energy, in which case it's not panicking about making lots more energy molecules, lots more ATP. So it's not, it will transcribe some genes to break down lactose, but it's not going to get in a big hurry about it. In contrast, if the uh, energy in the cell is low, and if the energy is low, then AMP is high, the cell will want to make lots and lots of these uh, enzymes that could help break down lactose so that we can get some glucose so that we can get the cell uh, making some energy. So uh, I have all four of those scenarios drawn out and we'll walk through those and we're just going to walk through the logic for each one and I'll try, I'll try to be quick because hopefully this, this just clicks and makes sense. High lactose means high allolactose and high energy means low AMP. There's now, in addition to the promoter and operator that we saw on the, uh, on the uh, trip operon, we've got one extra site, it's called CAP site, and then we've got a CAP protein. The CAP protein is not binding the CAP site in this case because CAP uh, does not have AMP to bind to and so it doesn't bind to the cap site. The polymerase comes in and we've got uh, an arrow showing that it's going to want to go and transcribe these genes. There's where the repressor could possibly sit as on this operator, but because there's allolactose in the cell, the repressor has released. Now, uh, just quick to compare to the trip operon, when trip was around and bound to the repressor, that is when the repressor could stick to the operator. So this is one of those, another one of those spots where we have to kind of flip our thinking about the uh, trip uh, operon compared to the lac operon. We want to be able to break down lactose if uh, lactose is around. And so uh, without even having to memorize it, we can just remember if lactose is around, we don't want a repressor in the way, so then we draw our repressor up here with the allolactose. I don't have to memorize uh, exactly whether the repressor is bound or not when it's bound to the uh, uh, allolactose. I can just think it through. All right, next scenario. Let's say we have high lactose but low energy, and that means that your allolactose is present and so your repressor is not binding to the operator. Your uh, AMP is going to be uh, abundant and that will make, in this case, bound to cap. AMP bound to cap is what makes it stick. So here we've got a, a protein where the molecule that's attached to it makes it not stick to DNA. This is the opposite. If the molecule AMP is bound to cap, then you're going to bind to that. And this protein, this cap protein, is an enhancer of transcription. And so the polymerase will come in, and I drew a giant arrow, because then we're going to want to really break down a lot of lactose because we've got low energy in the cell. We need to hurry up, break down lactose so that we can get the glucose, so that we can go through cellular respiration, so that the cell has some energy. Okay. So in both cases where lactose is present, we have transcription, but the amount of transcription differs depending on whether the cell is panicking or not because of low energy. All right, in the next two examples, they should be easy to talk through because with low lactose in both of these conditions, the repressor will bind, the polymerase will get blocked, you don't get transcription. So if there's no lactose around, why make the genes that could help break down lactose? And that was an example with low energy. And this is an example with high energy. Just because we have, uh, yeah, with high energy and with low lactose. And so again, the repressor is going to be bound because it sticks when it doesn't have allolactose stuck to it and it's going to block the polymerase. You don't get transcription, because why would you? If you don't have lactose, why make the enzymes to break down lactose? 
Just a side note, in addition to breaking down lactose, one of these proteins is for importing the lactose from outside the cell into the cell. So that's something to think about there. So anyway, there's walking through the four examples of low or high uh, energy and low or high lactose around. And if you just stop and think through what would the cell want to do in those situations, then you can uh, go ahead and fill out whether the proteins are bound to the operators and the cap binding site uh, just based on logic. So anyway, hope that helps and I'll talk to you later. Like and subscribe or not.